Well, it's a new week, and so it's a new story in the ongoing struggle to find and secure religious freedom for all people, and also in the ongoing balancing act between meeting people's individual needs for religious freedom and honoring the larger communal context in which we all have to function. Last week it was the story of Kim Davis, story of a Kentucky clerk who refused to issue marriage licenses to gay couples because it conflicted with her values. That story continues, and we'll see if she decides to, you know, live up to her obligation as issued by the judge. She gets out of jail if she doesn't interfere with other clerks issuing those licenses in her county. This week, the story is Sherry Stanley. Sherry Stanley is a woman who has been an express jet flight attendant, converted to Islam a few years ago, and two years at, in requested permission, an exception or an accommodation, allowing her not to serve alcohol to people flying on express jet because she felt it conflicted with her religious views. That worked for a couple of years until recently an internal complaint that is from one from an employee of express jet was lodged with the company challenging the legitimacy of that accommodation for Ms. Stanley. Interestingly, they didn't just challenge the accommodation because it interfered with her job, which should be the only reason for it not being granted, but made mention of this woman's quote-unquote headdress, meaning the hijab that she wears as a religious Muslim, and the quote, book she carried with foreign writings, unquote. I assume that was a Quran that she carried and how it could possibly interfere with her work, I haven't the foggiest idea. But it does suggest some ill feeling on the part of the complainant that had nothing to do with the efficacy in her job. That said, I think there's a lot of room for people to debate what's a legitimate accommodation and what is asking the general public to go too far. But here's what's really interesting to me about these two stories held up against each other. Typically, the people who supported and continue to support Kim Davis aren't saying a word to come to the defense of Sherry Stanley. And the people who intuitively say that Sherry Stanley is getting a raw deal from ExpressJet, and if this isn't resolved, she'll lose her job at the end of the 12-month administrative unpaid uh, leave. They're not, yeah, they run to her defense, but they're not standing up for Kim Davis. In fact, in the extreme, I wonder... Would Governor Mike Huckabee go to Atlanta, or wherever Miss Stanley lives, and stand with her, as he stood with Kim Davis, to fight religious tyranny? Somehow I doubt it. What about Michelle Collins, the, one of the new co-hosts on ABC's The View, who described, and forgive the language, described Kim Davis as a bitch and a monster? I'm curious. Is she going to describe Sherry Stanley the same way? I sure hope not. So here's the interesting thing. Ask yourself the following. If you intuitively side with one of these people, with Kim Davis, or with Sherry Stanley, why don't you stand with the other one just as much, since each is looking for an accommodation to her religious needs? I'm not suggesting the cases are entirely equal, and in fact, Ms. Stanley probably has a better legal case than does Ms. Davis. But I know this, if our intuition to support one of them doesn't at least open our hearts and minds to supporting the other, then it could be the problem we have is much more with us than with either of them. Something to think about as we try and unravel these cases and find ways that both honor individual freedom and communal need in the months and years ahead.